Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the Boeing 747 pack system, or pneumatics as it's actually normally called. The pneumatics on the Boeing 747 aircraft, on the uh, 200 at least, well I think that's all 747s. On all 747s are controlled by the engine bleed air APU bleed, ground carts, which are not simulated currently. Um, on this aircraft, specifically in the Boeing 747-200, the pack, pack and pneumatic system supplies the, or the bleed system, supplies the packs, the ADP hydraulic pumps, the anti-ice for the wings, the leading edge flaps, the engine starting, and the uh, cargo heating. So let's go ahead and get into the cockpit. By the way, I'm in the Northwest Orient livery, which I will also leave a link down below. This is a beautiful, beautiful livery. We're at... Uh, default San Diego here looks pretty great though I'm not gonna lie this is one of the best airports on X-Plane and so yeah come and check it out it's, uh, it's about uh, 6 42 p.m. let's go ahead and sit down in the cockpit and uh, let's begin so right here in the engineer's seat we're looking at the pneumatics panel right in front of us but we're gonna go ahead and have to start up the APU first so in uh, my electrical panel video which you should totally check out I'm putting that in the right hand corner right now uh, I have uh, shown you how to start the APU properly, and I'm going to do that same thing here. So we're going to go ahead and start start the up the airplane. So close the battery guard. Do fire test. Fault test. And then we will continue by pressing down on the stop to on. Fuel valve, DC pump, and waiting for the door to open. And we're going to do the squib test here and make sure that the bleed air is closed. You don't want to start this with the bleed air open. Here we go, starting. And we have the EGT instantly rise up. And we also have our RPM begin to increase. Okay, let's go ahead and close our fields and then we will wait for the generator. And while we wait for that, I'll go ahead and quickly talk about the um, mode selector and cabin uh, altitude pressurization panel down here. So the mode selector over here, the check function is only used for maintenance, so you will not need to use it uh, as a pilot. And of course we don't really have maintenance, sim maintenance simulated right now, so don't use the check. Uh, manual mode will let you manually control the outflow valves. Manual left will con let you control the outflow valve on the left manually here. So let's go ahead and quickly close these guys because we've got power now. And I'll put some lights on in the panel here. And I will show you what I mean. Let's do just the background a specific percent. Bring up that map light. Circuit breakers and the uh, circuit breaker main just to make the cockpit look pretty. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So if we go over here and we go ahead and look at the panel here, as I've already done, I've selected, let's select it back to manual. And let's go uh, to the close position, and I can also close that one, open it, and the outflow valves are located at the back of the airplane, you can hear the APU running, they're located right here, the, they are both these doors, this one on the right is actually closed a little bit more than the one on the left here, and you can actually tell right here from the cockpit uh, how they are uh, open here, you can see that the uh, right one is uh, closed more than the left. So let's go ahead and set those back to auto, and those will automatically adjust. We can do manual left and manual right once. So if I go to manual here, let me go ahead and go close, close, close. Let me drive that a little bit. What's going to happen is when I select manual left, it's going to set this outflow valve, the left outflow valve, to manual and the right one to automatic. I can do vice versa with manual right, and I can close this one if I want to. So during flight, always set it to auto, and right after landing, set it to manual, and go ahead and um, <clears throat> make sure both of those valves are set to open. So if we go ahead and just talk about for a second the altitude, I shouldn't really have to talk much about this, the cabin altitude, go ahead and set your cabin altitude for the flight. So if I'm cruising at 37,000 feet, we set this to 3.7 and that'll properly set our altitude, or our flight altitude. Make sure you have the current barometer setting, so if on the ground your barometer is 3014, you set it to 3014 up here, and then when you're up in the air, 
make sure to set that to 9 or 9 or 2. The rate limit test will show will show you the uh, outflow valves here. And so if I just go ahead and go rate limit test, it's going to show you that there's a rate limit and it will immediately drive the doors to close to try and maintain pressure if there is some sort of loss in the cabin. So say, I, I don't know, if something hit the airplane, which is extremely rare, you had a bird strike and the bird actually struck into the cabin somewhat and you had this hole in the cabin, it would try to drive these closed so you could maintain some pressure. Okay, so there are six pressure relief lights on this panel here. You can see one and two, th three, four, five, and six. The uh, pressure relief relief lights will show when the pressure relief doors are open, letting the uh, uh, bleed air system relieve itself. The differential pressure system uh, will actually control all those when it reaches about 9.7 psi. You can actually see that right there with the red bar. Actually, probably not 9.7, it looks more like 9.2. So yeah, 9.2 they'll automatically open up and they will begin to relieve pressure. And the altimeter, always set the altimeter to the current barometer setting the airport, and it'll show you the cabin vertical speed. And this actually shows you the the um, cabin altitude, not the air, aircraft's altitude. Just want to make sure you make a note of that. The uh, rate limiter down here is currently set to the uh, indent. Always keep it on the indent for uh, normal operations, which it's currently 500 feet per minute at a climb and 300 feet per minute at a descent, which it has a maximum. If so, if I increase it all the way over here, it'll uh, basically mean that I can climb at uh, 2,500 feet per minute and descend at 1,500, and I can get down to about 150 uh, on the uh, climb, I believe, if I decrease the rate. The altitude horn cutout at approximately 12,000 feet will uh, start ringing if you have not pressurized the cabin and you just push that button to cut out the alarm please make sure you pressurize the cabin or everybody's going to suffocate and the uh, aircraft's not even going to be able to hold at such high altitudes so when any of the systems on the airplane show the high stage light which they will so <clears throat> during taxi right before takeoff right after landing and you you're idling the engines or keeping them at low power the high stage light will come on uh, showing that you have low thrust and you are closing the uh, low stage bleed valves and automatically uh, opening the high pressure bleed valves for low thrust. Uh, the overheat lights, well, I mean, I can easily explain the overheat lights on this panel. There's uh, quite a few of them. There's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I see 9. There's probably more. Uh, but all of the overheats will show an overheat in that specific compartment, and you'll need to shut off any of the uh, systems corresponding to that uh, compartment. Make sure you close the bleed valves if you detect an overheat in any of these. Let's go ahead and open these bleeds. So right here we have a parallel pack system. We have packs 1 and 2. Or sorry, we have the bleed air 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. With the, uh, You can isolate the system here with pack 2 in the middle here being run only by the ground carts and APU, if so need be, uh, and you can actually isolate. So if you said this system is not working, this side of the system is not working over here, we can go ahead and close that isolation right there. Oh, I think it just, yeah, it's starting to get darker. Okay, that actually puts better light on the cockpit. Uh, but we can use packs uh, 2 and 3 over here on this system with engines 3 and 4. And uh, it'll show sufficient duct pressure for the left and right system. So it's sometimes not noticeable, but let me go ahead and open the bleed air. There we go. We immediately see a rise in the right-hand duct pressure. Okay, so if I actually, if I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the isolation valve here, you will see it rise right back up on the left as well because I mean the APU is feeding to both it's just I was closing this one off but so you can see the left system is at zero and the right system is at uh, let's see that's 50 that's 40 uh, I want to say 44 
44 PSI, about 40, actually that looks about 45 PSI. So yeah, those will rise up to 45 PSI right there. So due to improper use or high temperatures, you will have a pack trip. So I'm gonna turn on the packs here. You might hear them in the background. Yep, you can actually hear them very slightly. Uh, the packs here, can actually trip if they have a high temperature or they're being used improperly. And so a light will come on, the pack will trip itself, and then you will press reset to reset the pack trip. And that's only during a failure. This should never happen during your life. You should not have a, uh, or, sorry, it'll happen in real life, but um, during normal operation, I should say. So you should never have a pack trip during normal operation. Make sure you always have greater than 20 PSI uh, even with the packs running. So if the packs are all running here, I mean, and I, the isolation valves, both of the open position, you should always have greater than 20 PSI here. Gas for fans are electronically controlled fans uh, above the overhead bins that the passengers use. If you ever fly, which of course many of you that simulate have of course been on a real plane. And when you sit uh, in the, uh, you know, the cabin and you're sitting there, you have the little fan over you. That's actually just the gas for fans. They're very loud in the simulation, which is fine. They're electronically controlled. So if I turned off the packs here, you'd hear the pack air die, which it just did. And you can hear the past, uh, the, the, the gaspers coming on there. And they'll still run with the packs on. The uh, supplemental ventilation fans are installed below the cabin. And I have to emphasize that. They are installed below the cabin. And will take air and they will put it back into the air ventilation system. And it can be redistributed. So it's right here. The... Uh, Supplemental ventilation, turn that on, keep those both on right there. And the recirculation fans, this is why I said uh, below before, recirculation fans are above the cabin. They are installed above the cabin, and they, once again, will return air into the air distribution system. Uh, and the more you have, these in, uh, will greatly increase the ventilation rate. So we turn those all on. So upon reaching higher flight levels above 10,000 feet, the humidifier supplies humidity to the cabin, like uh, I could say simulated humidity to the cabin. Um, but yeah, it delivers humidity to the cabin uh, using water into the cabin and flight deck to maintain uh, relative humidity, I believe. And I have to really note that here, I believe. There is not really much in information on the humidifier system, so I checked on what the 747 400, so of course a much more advanced version of the 747 400 automatic humidifier system does. This is what I believe that this system does. You don't have to take my word for it, I'm just saying what I believe on this one. But so yeah, make sure you don't switch it on below 10,000 feet because the humidity is already fine at 10,000 feet. But as you go above, the humidity is going to get <coughs> uh, wackier and wackier. So you're going to want to maintain relative humidity by f switching that on. So the manual pack controls located right here. Uh, there's three of them. You also have these three pack buttons to read the um, the uh, ACM, which is the air cycle machine temperatures. Uh, so you can see all these. They're all the same because all the packs are set to the same. So if I go pack controls, manual, man manual, manual, and I go cool, it's going to be very, very slightly. Oh, never mind. And you can see the bypass valve there moving to the cool. And there we go. Oh, my God. That's getting pretty cold. And now our pack is absolutely freezing. And we can go automatic, and you'll see the bypass valve move back to heat, and it's going to shoot up. And you can actually see the duct uh, temperature right there completely drop off if I do that again. Another thing to note that confused me at first, you're going to want to check these pack controls. It doesn't depend on which control you've set, so let's make sure they all go back to auto and all reset. So we'll reset them all by using auto. And so if I go right here to manual on these guys, and I have pack 2 selected to visualize the airflow, the computer discharge, the ACM outlet, the bypass valve, the inlet door, and the exit door, this is only controlling pack 2. So if I go cool on pack 2, and it stops right there at 0 degrees Celsius, just, yeah, okay, now we're below freezing. Okay, and I click on pack 1, it will show me what pack 1 is. So it actually depends on which button I have selected to control which pack right here. 
let's put them all back to auto. So right up here, we are currently looking at the uh, zone temperature controls. These are pretty easy to understand. You have normal, which is in the middle. It's great. Normal is great to use because it's going to keep... Here, let's actually make sure those packs all reset there. So if we go ahead and set all these packs here, yep. So those have already been set. And then I go trim air open. That's going to start setting the duct temperature there. I'm actually questioning why we're not... Here, let's go warm. Interesting. Okay. I think I've done something wrong right now. But, anyways, just to quickly explain, these systems right here, the um, you just you're gonna switch it over to warm and crank it towards warm if you need warm. I normally set it to about right here, which sets me at about 25 or so degrees right there, uh, and that's degrees Celsius. And then I have about approximately 20 here, and then 15 here. And then if you actually want to use the, I call it the secret mode because a lot of people don't realize that this exists. If I just press that down there, it's going to put me into manual mode where I can just push warm and push cool. And I can crank the dial in whatever direction I need to uh, heat that uh, compartment up to. So we have five compartments on this airplane. Oh, actually, it looks like, uh, yeah, so never mind. I didn't do anything wrong. All the compartments are just slowly rising in temperature again because we brought them down so low when we froze that pack. So if I go and set that to normal. So yeah, you can manually control the temperature there. So the trim air, which is the switch that I just flipped a uh, moment ago. So the trim air trims the uh, packs and they actually, they regulate the, uh, the uh, pack temperatures here. So they keep them about the same. So the duct, you can see that they're trimming off the ducts here, sending cold air to the compartments that need cold air and hot air to the compartments that need hot air. And not like extreme differences in hot air, like barely anything. You just want to keep the trim air open when you have the system running so you can trim off the system and make it seem almost flush with the airplane. So in specific compartments, it blends properly. So you don't have one compartment absolutely freezing and another absolutely uh, boiling, which you'd never have. Okay, so we're actually almost finished here. I just have a few more things to explain. Uh, the half-pack system is a newer 747-200 thing. The 747-200's half-pack system is pretty much exactly how it sounds. You're just going to flip it to half-pack. It's going to use less airflow, and it's going to use less bleed pressure. I like using this on the ground a lot, because I'm, I know I'm using less bleed air, so I, I honestly don't know why. I, I guess it. I'm not putting as much stress on the packs, I'll say, when I'm on the ground. But yeah, mid-flight, always keep them but you can actually see right here you can see our psi changes gets up to about 32 there 33 the uh, bypass valve right here let me just quickly explain the bypass inlet door and exit door um so the bypass valve uh will mostly heat but at times it will shift to cool to remain constant with the um the uh air cycle machine right here and then over at the inlet doors, the inlet doors basically are just controlling the rim air. So it, they both show you in the cool position. They can go to the heat position. They almost always stay in the cool position. Mid-flight, they shift a little bit. But on the ground, they always stay in the cool position. So up here at equipment cooling, we're just checking out the equipment cooling and uh, aft cargo heat system real quick. And then just quickly the engine start. So right here, if we go test you can see smoke in the compartment here I'm just switching my notes here I got a lot of notes for this video here okay so the equipment uh, cooling if we test the smoke light right here it will display the test and if there was smoke in the compartment it would actually say smoke there and we wouldn't have to test it um, so in the normal function right here, this valve control, always keep it in normal. No matter what you're doing, always keep it in normal unless it is an abnormal situation. So this guard should never be flipped up unless there's a serious problem. So if we flip up this guard right here, and we were to set it to normal, which it should always be in, the uh, normal mode, air is dumped, and some is put back into the vents for heating. 
from the equipment cooling compartment because it's hot air at that point. A lot of it is just dumped overboard. If there was smoke in the compartment and you get this light, you're going to flip this to smoke immediately and it's going to dump everything from that compartment. It's going to dump all of the air out of that compartment right there. For ditching, it will automatically close the valves so you don't get water in that compartment upon landing on water, which if you ever have to flip this switch to ditching, God, I, I, uh, Godspeed. That's all I can say. Actually, I think if I... No, so yeah, just keeping it normal. Right here, you have the blower selector. Same, it's got a lot of importance as well. For It's for blowing cool air into the compartment. Always keep it at normal. Alternate it if the normal system fails. And if there is no detected airflow at all, if this lights up, the ground crew horn will sound continuously. You can actually test this right here. It's not going to sound off the horn. And you'll press reset if you clear all the smoke out of the compartment or you clear the no airflow light. And just finishing up here, the aft cargo heat right here. If you switch it to normal, actually just flicker there because I don't have everything running here. I actually think I'm going to need the engines running for that one. Um, but I can test it right here, and it'll show on container and on bulk. When in normal and you're taxing, it should... Yep, there it goes. It's just testing it real quick. It will say on container and on bulk, letting you know that they are both running. And uh, basically, the aft cargo heat, to easily be explained, is using that same hot air, but it's making sure that your precious cargo, including pets, doesn't turn into a popsicle mid-flight. So if I go right up here to the overhead panel, and I go ahead and set the uh, nope, overhead lights, and we have our standby and main ignition. We just have two ignition systems. If one fails, they should always be set to normal. But I'm just talking here about the start valve. So if I flip the start Ready valve... To start the engines. There we go. Ready for engine start. So the start valve is immediately sending air to start spinning up those compressors. And we have two two flight starters for each engine and ground starters for each engine. The flight starters use uh, ram air, basically ram air for the engines to spin the engine without actually having to use a ton of uh, bleed air. And then the bleed air is used on the ground to spin the compressor to start the engine. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I will link Felis's plane, the Boeing 747-200, which is my absolute favorite plane on X-Plane now, and the uh, Northwest Orient livery on the, uh, in the description down below. Anyways, thanks for watching today. I know it's been a little long. We'll be reviewing the hydraulic system and uh, gear and brakes next time, which shouldn't be as long. And then I believe we'll be going into fire protection after that and moving towards the front of the cockpit. Anyways, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.